Okay, now welcome to Doris's Kitchen. And because we're starting a series of cooking with Grandma, I felt that Grandma and Granddaughter needed to have special aprons. So this is how to make aprons without using a pattern. So if you listen carefully, play the video again and stuff, you can make these. They make beautiful gifts, you know, if you have a birthday coming up. You can make one for you and one for your little one and stuff and add a few cake mixes with it and stuff or cookie mixes and everything to make it easy but to get the young ones into cooking uh, because now everybody goes for what's fast and convenient and the old traditions of cooking homemade it's kind of going out the window so let's bring some of that back uh, you know money's getting tight and stuff so people need to learn to cook more at home and to cook meals and to cook uh, treats and desserts and everything. So here we're going to start a series of cooking with grandma. We've already done two videos and now it's time for the apron before we continue with more uh, because I kind of tested the little granddaughter out and it seems to be okay. She likes it. She looks forward to it when she comes to grandma's house. So this is how we do it. Now this is making an apron with no pattern. Okay, so what you're going to do is first of all, you're going to measure uh, from breast to breast. You know, because everybody's a different size, so this is how you're going to do it to make a pattern. Uh, well, to cut it out and all that good stuff. So just from the top, from breast to breast, and then the center is from waist to waist. Okay? You go from one side of your waist to the other side of your waist. Okay? And then measure from your breast, which is just a little, you know, for us ladies, just a little over the breast line to the waistline. Okay? So that's your measurement that way. And then there's your measurement that way. Okay? And uh, then after, you want to be able to Measure from the top of the breast right here to the top of the other one to go around your neck. That way you'll know how long uh, this needs to be. Okay? Uh, because for everybody it's different. But that's a real easy way from breast to breast and measure around. So you know how much of a loop you need to put for around your head for the apron to fit correctly. Okay, and then from waist to waist. So what I did was, I made this double-sided. Uh, only because I got such a good deal on the material. Check the clearance rack. I paid only $3 a yard. I bought two yards. Because it was a sewing in the middle of it, uh, I got two and a half yards for the price of three on clearance to top it off. So I able, able to make my apron, the little girl's apron, and a whole other outfit. <laughs> Because it really don't take much, you know. If you go ahead and measure that and measure from waist to waist, you can do it two-sided or you can do it one-sided. If you're only doing it one-sided, you're going to want some more of this to put down around here at the bottom. I made it double-sided and then I gave it this extra sewing uh, because of the, uh, you know, when you wash it, you want to make sure it keeps its shape and everything so it doesn't all curl right up. So this is for extra um, strongness to make it a little bit stronger. Okay, so for the little girl I done the same. I measured from chest to chest, from breast to breast, and then from up to her waist. She's just a little thing so it doesn't take very much for little ones. Okay, now I'm going to use this. Now this is really good. This is that ribbon that just folds right up double fold uh, base tape. It's quilted. This is really super good. It's super strong because if you notice right here, not only is it folded in half already for you, which makes it good to just put your material right in between, but if you open that up, look at that. Extra double. So you're really going to have a lot of good strength into that, okay? Because it's already folded double for you. And then you're sewing it and you're going to have it sewed double again. So there's a lot of good strength in that so you don't have to worry about that. Okay, so I'm going to end up putting that on the top. 
and then you know like I did for mine and going around and using the tie so if you're wondering how long you need to have it uh, you know for tying up and everything it's the length of your waist so measure your waist add two extra inches just for good measures okay and that's how much length you need to begin with on this side and then if you do it the same on the other side it gives you plenty uh, for sewing okay but what I'm going to do for hers she's going to be double sided too and stuff but I want to add a little more fanciness because it's for a little girl and it's okay for us to be plain but you know you got to add a little more fanciness for the encouragement of wanting to cook and they need to look so pretty and stuff so I'm going to add a fancy little garland uh, gathering going all the way around from the waist to the other waist so what I did was because I have the square so this will be my center right here so I took a square folded it in half ironed it here we are folded it in half to iron it now I think what most people uh, wonder uh, on sewing and making things homemade and everything which is a lot stronger uh, than what you buy today and everything uh, is how to gather it so this is what I'm going to show you but first I did not mark with my halfway I need to mark my halfway mark here and the phone is ringing so I'm going to cut right at my halfway mark that way I know exactly where the center needs to be when I do my fold just a little bit not too much now okay so you see I have my little cut okay so that will end up being my center which is right here uh, when I do that so when I do my fold I will begin right from there pinning it to where my center is right here to where my center is right here and then that way there you know that when you do the other side because first you're going to do one side you're going to put it on one side and then after you get that sewed you have to do the other side and then after I'll do the sewing like this in between so that you have that extra sewing going all the way around for the strength so it doesn't lose its shape in washing or anything so I think what people really want to see and I'll show you that I mean YouTube used to give me all the time I wanted and then when they changed they went to giving me just um, 10 minutes then they kind of move me up to 15 so here we are and I'll show you how you do that okay so this is my little one and I will be needing to pin it afterwards so let's keep the little pinball going here so what you need to do is you know usually I sew it two and a half so you're going to want your stitch to be longer so I'm going to move that to four some extra string make sure you have string because that's where your pulling is go real close okay because you know when you do sew you sew at five eighths and everything but you're going to want it real close uh, for this gathering done the dresses and stuff people wanted to see more sewing and I think it's really because of the arms and everything people want to pick up sewing but they really don't know how to gather the material you know they think they have to okay just fold it over and um, pin it fold it over and pin it but that's not how it's done at all so we'll show you how this is done And then anybody who wants to see the finishing touch, 
all you have to do is uh, stay tuned and watch some more of my videos, Cooking with Grandma, so uh, then you'll get to see me and my little granddaughter, Kara, wearing our aprons as we cook for you. Her mom's going to college, so while mom goes to college on Tuesdays, I'll have her because mom's going to do morning and night, and dad's already going to have his hands full with one. Uh, she took this last semester off to have a baby. Okay, now, if you take the top one going this way, you're going to want to use the top one going the next way. Always make sure you turn this back to your two and a half after for your sewing. If you forget, it's not going to be so nice. Okay, and see how you just pull and then pass it down. Pull and pass it down. Pull and pass it down. I didn't know if I was showing you that right. So I started with the top thread. So when I go, you know, go my halfway, I want to go the other way. And see how that gathers? And that's how you do sleeves when you're making dresses, when you're following a pattern. But right now, this is for my apron, just to add some fanciness for the little girl. Make her feel special. She already loves cooking, and then she gets to, hey, Daddy, try some of this. So, just to get the little ones back into cooking, and it's something for me to do with her when I have her. You know, because you can only play so much. Winter's cold outside, so going to the swings and stuff like that is not my cup of tea. So let's see if we can get the little girl doing something different. She loves this. She loves cooking. And it can also help her with gaining some weight because she is a little tiny thing. Okay, almost halfway. And then I'll go to the other side. Because I made my cut in the middle, I know exactly where my halfway mark is. I don't know if I'm showing this high enough for you guys. Maybe I'll back this up and you can see a little bit more. There you go. Now the one thing that's really important when you do that, uh, your apron and stuff, you know, before you do that final sewing that I did going around, is iron. Make sure you iron that way that that sewing is right where it's supposed to be in the middle so that uh, it doesn't overlap and show on one side or the other when you're doing uh, a double-sided apron. Okay, and that's right there. And here's my halfway mark. See, and that's how you do gatherings. And then when you pin it, you just stretch it out to where you think you're going to need it. You know, when I go around the curves, I'm really going to need it. And then I'll be doing the other side, so I'm really going to need to do that. Now again, start with the top, just like you did on the other side. Because if you pull on the bottom, then you're going to undo what you just done on the other side, you know. So if you pull the top string, pull the top string on the other side too. Then you always know that when you're sewing, you put the two good sides of the material, not the back side, the two front sides, face to face. And remember that when you go to do the other part, which will be the bottom, because I'll have to do the same to the bottom on this side. And then there's my center. And then I'll be sewing from there. So just stay tuned and watch some of those cooking shows to see how it all turns out. If you're on my penetrace and stuff, then I'm sure you can see the, you'll be able to see the pictures there. There's not too much you can do in 15 minutes. But maybe in the future they'll give me more time so I can show you all of it. But 
hopefully I gave you the idea of how to measure and how to do all that. You don't have to add this extra fanciness. You can go just plain. Okay, welcome to Doris's Kitchen. But today we're not cooking. Today we're sewing Christmas dresses. Okay, this is for two of my little granddaughters and stuff. And this is really nice material. I don't know if you can see how it sparkles as they move. So you'll be able to see the sparkleness of it all. It's very pretty. Beautiful red. Just sparkles with the light. You know. So we have three pleats in the front. You can see our beautiful pleats. And we have two in the back. And stuff with a zipper and everything. So this is the Christmas dress. I think when it moves around you can see uh, the beautiful sparkle on the material. And this is the material right here. It's got plenty of beautiful sparkles for the little girls and stuff. So I chose a size three. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Just the way it all just glitters and everything. Nice red glitter for them. Uh, because that dress right there is for Kara. Uh, it's a size three is what I'm making it. Uh, it's a little bit, going to be a little bit on the long side, so it'll go below her knees, a uh, little bit below her knees, uh, maybe about an inch and a half below her knees, uh, but she'll grow into it and stuff. She's quite a petite little girl. So, and I made it super strong because I needed, you know, for it to last and stuff, but to also fit her character because she's a very active little child. So the fancy... Uh, flowers and ribbons and all that stuff we don't add to the dresses uh, because that's just something that's going to be in her way <laughs> okay and we've added of course a necklace a Christmas tree necklace uh, to go with the outfit so this was the pattern that I used the new look patterns are really really easy to uh, to use and stuff directions are very simple uh, you can always just follow the pictures if you can't. So I kind of went with this dress, but I didn't add the ribbon and stuff and everything. These two are pretty, pretty much the same. Uh, just didn't add the bow and the ribbon. Uh, she's not going to put up with that, I don't believe. And stuff. So this next pattern, now this is for the newborn. So it's a newborn pattern and stuff. And I went with the newborn size. Uh, this can also go to different sizes and stuff. Again, it's a new look uh, pattern and stuff. This works really good. So I'm going to go with that top one right there. The one that the little girl is wearing in the picture. Only I'm not going with that bow. That to me is just, I mean that flower, that is just something they're going to suck on. So, you know, know your child. It's not something I put on a little baby's outfit. So I went with the three months, so it's really not going to take too much uh, material, you know, to do her outfit. So the patterns are really simple. First you choose which one you want to make, which I took the A because I wanted to have a little bit of sleeves and stuff. And then if you go right down here, I mean, they make it really simple. They show you how to lay each piece. First they tell you which pieces are going to be needed out of the... Um, out of the package, you know, because they do have, you know, different designs and stuff on it. So you can make some dresses for the winter, some dresses for the spring and stuff. Uh, but they do lay it all out too. So I went with A and then you just lay it all out. Now because I've already used um, some of the um, material for the first one, believe it or not, you know, it's like you know, putting the time into it and stuff, you can make it more rugged. Uh, and of course, you can cater it according to the child and stuff. Because like on that dress and everything, I needed to make sure that the neck, you know, because it has the glitter and stuff, that the neck would not irritate. Uh, or the sleeves, you know, especially underneath the arms and everything. Uh, that's very important for this little girl and stuff. Uh, you know, because of skin conditions and stuff. So, and then you don't want all that glitter on the inside, 
you know, to go on t-shirts and stuff like that and all over the place. So just wish she needed it, you know, because she's just a sparkle little girl, full of energy, you know, really cool. Okay, so because I've already done that, so I had extra pieces and stuff, uh, I had to lay them out a little bit different than what they had on there. So I still have one more piece there, and then I'll have to open this one up because this one only needs one, so you need the whole piece opened up uh, for the front piece of the skirt because you do have to add all the little pleats and stuff. Okay, so if you see the arrow go this way, then make it go that way with your fabric. And right here you see how it has to be on the center fold because all the fabrics come folded up. So you put it on the center fold. Other than that, just go according to the arrows. All right. So I still had this one extra little piece and stuff that I needed to put on. And I had this extra piece from the first one. So I'm going to put it here instead of laying it out there because what I'm trying to do is to save as much material as I can because in another video, um, after our Thanksgiving dinner and everything, uh, those who are invited and stuff like that, we get together and we do a nice craft. And I want to be able to um, use the leftovers for the scarf because this is going to be a glass snowman that we're doing with beautiful little hats and everything. And I'm going to need a scarf. So what better way than to use the leftovers. Always use leftovers if you can. And save, you know, any pieces that are good size, save them because another craft will come around. You know, whether you do crafts with the kids at school like I used to do uh, when my kids were young, uh, or just to do them at home now that there's grandchildren in the picture and stuff. So, because Kara's been collecting a lot with me, uh, this year, as far as uh, acorns and everything, just to do a little kids' craft when Christmas comes. So, kind of neat. So, be sure to add your kids into a lot of things that you do. I mean, we have already done uh, before, if you know, looked at some of my other videos and stuff, how we took uh, pine cones and warmed them up in the oven and stuff to get the stickiness to go away. Now when I, uh, uh, and then after that we turned around and uh, put peanut butter on it and rolled it into uh, bird seed. Now we're letting that dry so by the time the snow hits the ground, uh, you know, and the birds are not as able to get food as easy, we'll have all these pine cones that have peanut butter, high protein, and the seeds for them. And I haven't seen no squirrels around yet, but boy, I did a lot of videos last year uh, on my View With Me channel, which is my other YouTube channel, um, of them playing, fighting, and everything else. <laughs> kind of cute, really. Okay, I'm going to try to save even this little piece because it might work out for part of my scarf going down. So try to save all you can. You know, sometimes you might have to rearrange it, especially if you're making two outfits, like I am. Uh, trying to save all I can, make sure I have enough, because all I bought was two yards, because that's all that was left of this one in particular, and this is the one I wanted because it fit my little Kara. Okay, so then you cut into these little pieces like this. I don't know if you can really see me doing this. Let me check and see. Oh yeah, you can see me doing it. Okay, so you just cut into that and there's a reason for that because on one of the other pieces it's going to match up and you're going to want to match it up perfectly. Okay, and you'll notice like, oh let me see, uh, like on this one here, this next piece I'm going to have to do because it's just one piece. If you notice, it's got a line right in the middle to show you that's the center in front of the dress. So when you get to that, you might want to just clip a little piece like that. Not a lot, not too long, you know, because you do go five-eighths of an inch for your seams. And then what you do when you do your seams and everything, uh, some people will iron the whole material beforehand, 
and for me, I iron as I go so that my seams, when I sew one piece of the dress, when I go to put the next piece, my seams are going to be exactly the way I want so that both sides are not on, on the same side. You iron it right down so it's open, so your seam is open, and that makes for stronger okay when you're making your outfit so it's not pulling and tugging and and it's even uh, on strength and everything so that's really good to do okay so these are just the nice things you know in the old days they always made their clothes all by hand and everything and really when you go with this kind of fanciness and stuff uh, you know when you're doing two dresses like this, like I am, and stuff, it's really like buying two, but only paying half price for them. Uh, you know, it's like buy one, get one free, and you put your time into it. You know, of course you made it for someone special, and something homemade, you know. Kids appreciate that a lot more. Uh, that's why a lot of my videos you'll see where I have, you know, where people made homemade toys for the boys, you know, and all these little scraps and everything, you know, the girls are going to be into all the dolls and stuff, you can really make a lot of material, I mean a lot of clothes for the, uh, for their dolls, out of pieces that you made dresses for them with, you know, so that means a lot, or if you're into quilting and stuff, you can use, you know, a piece, and, uh, you know, keep saving it up as you do. Now this one has two, so you're going to want to do both of them. Cut them both. There's a reason for that. Okay. And, uh, you know, so save all the pieces, you know, like one good square, you know, and just keep collecting. So that, you know, in later years you can make them a nice quilt. And they can have all the pieces of the material of stuff you've already made for them. You know, or even for their, their dolls and stuff. You know, the doll might need a, a little blanket in the crib, you know. So if you have pieces, enough piece left, you can do that. You know, you can do an awful lot. So, here we go. Oh, I got this side left. So, save all your pieces. You never know how you can use them later, you know. Sometimes if you do a craft and stuff and you need to just cut out a little hat for a snowman or something, you know, nothing like this beautiful sparkly stuff. So save it all. I did really close on this one. There we go. All right, now this one also had another one right here. So we shall do that. Now when I do the arms, because you know you're going to be gathering on the top of the arms and stuff, but you just put your tension up higher and you go close to the edge, you know, uh, that way there you can pull it and it gathers. It's always good to put where the middle, the top, the middle of the top is. Then you know that that's going to be on your shoulders. Uh, um, seam. Sometimes I have to slow down when I talk. It comes out a little bit messed up. If I talk too fast, you know, the Frenchman's out of me. All right. So just follow the directions and stuff and know that, you know, the kids will like it. Now this here I'm doing because mom wants to do, they haven't done baby pictures yet. Baby's a month old now. And uh, they're going to do Christmas pictures as the baby's announcement pictures and stuff uh, to send out to family and friends and stuff. Uh, so these little girls are going to have this cute little dress. So then we're going to do pictures. These are all the leftovers. Now look at that. I can open that right up. I can use them as pieces for scarves. You know, I'm wide enough and stuff. So together, put a seam, turn it inside out, whichever way I need to do it. Um, make sure you keep your pieces together. <laughs> the bad thing would be is to start sewing and 
be looking for pieces. Uh, so, uh, save all your extra little pieces. It's so much. All right, welcome to Doris's kitchen. And we're going to continue with our making the pillow for little Kara. So first I turned around and bought a yard of material and this is Dora the Explorer because that's one of her happy little friends and stuff. And it's only a half a yard so we took the half a yard, we cut it in half, we first sewed around, of course we left an opening so we can put our stuffing in and now I'm going around and I'm zigzagging uh, just for the extra. Uh, because I like the extra protection because I hate, you know, when you buy something in the store and it just falls apart on you. And then I back it back up in the corners because if that's where something's going to go wrong, it usually does. Right there. So we already made a pillow for my great-grandson and she helped me stuff it if you watch my video. So today we're making hers because she says she wanted one. So there we go. All right. So now what I'm going to do is cut my corners because when you turn it inside out, you've got to cut your corners. Uh, it helps to poke your corners back out. So, each one of my corners are being cut off. Other than that, you know, you have that little bump and everything, so that's not going to work so good. Okay. So now it's going to be time for the stuffing. And this is what we're working on. Now, Kara's on her way, so I'm going to tell her she has to help me with another pillow. We'll see if she remembers that she wanted one, or if she decides she really wants this one. She might decide this one's for her sister. Okay, so see we go around with our fingers and we poke our corners back. There we go. Hi, you home? Amy's girl's home. Oh, slippery, huh? Yeah, oh, kick it off. Whoa, whoa, okay. Are you gonna help me? I need some help with a little pillow. See, we got some more of that stuff, just like we did the other day. Huh? All right. You wait. <laughs> Mimi's got to turn around and uh, finish pushing her. Look, who's this? Who's on there? A diamond shirt. Yeah, Dora the Explorer. Oh, yeah, you see. Oh, no, it's on. Don't touch it. <laughs> Don't touch it. It's on. Watch out. Okay, wait one minute, wait one minute. So this is Dora the Explorer, right? Did you see that? I think sure, I don't remember which one, I got them all. Look, look, whose pillow is this? Whose pillow is this gonna be? Oh. Happy. Somebody who's happy? Somebody's going to be happy to have a new pillow? Right? Right. Right. Is it going to be you? Kara, Kara. Is what? it yours? Yeah. It is? <gasps> the whole bag fell, huh? Got to watch out. See how quick she is with fluffing the pillow? Oh, yeah. Let's hurry up. <laughs> this one's Kara's, right? This pillow? So we're going to go real fast and fill it up, and then we're going to sew it, and you got a new pillow to night with tonight. 
Okay, to take to your house. Do we have enough stuffing or you want more? More. More? Yeah. We need to fill it all up. Here we go. All right. Look at that. Look, it's got monkeys on there. What is Oh, I don't know. Why was that in there? Oh, dear. It's the stick that helps you stuff things oh, that have smaller. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's cute. Oh. We'll put that on the counter for me. Huh, that wasn't in the last bag we bought, huh? Yeah. Hey, look, there's monkeys. Yeah. What's the monkey's name? Can you say Boots? Boots Monkey. The boots Monkey? So you got a nanai with monkeys? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's all right. You gonna dream about some monkeys? Maybe wanted to make sure you had your pillow too, because you helped me with the other baby pillow. A true. Yeah. So now you can have yours. Oh boy. We're working fast now. Wow. She really wants that pillow. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, folks. So you can see she has Dora the Explorer pillow. It's a good size pillow. Just a half a yard and everything. So, be sure to turn around and sub me. Join me as a friend as soon as she's all done stuffing this bag. Mimi's going to sew it right up. And she gets a new one to night night with tonight. Right? Can we say bye-bye to the camera? Bye, okay. Mom. Come here. <laughs> bye, camera. She's stuffing. She's a worker today. Bye-bye now. So here we are at Doris's kitchen and here's my little helper, right? Say hi. Say hi. Yeah? Okay, that's hot. Alright, so we've been busy sewing up material uh, to make different baby items and stuff. Uh, and <laughs> she's still waving. Okay. And my little granddaughter, Kara, helped me to make some of the items for my great-grandson was about to be born. So, we asked his mom what she wanted for stuff and she says she likes race cars. So, she wanted to go kind of a military style but found that that was very expensive but so she went race cars because she loves racing. Her daddy done a lot of racing. So, here we are. We started with one yard of material and this is double the thickness and stuff. So, you have super warm and we just got our ribbon and stuff and you buy it this wide and everything <coughs> then you just put it right in the middle leaving it folded in half you go around and what I done was I super sewed the edges okay just to give a little bit more Wake sewing up. on the edge and stuff Wake up. Uh, because a lot of time when you go through the washing and everything things start to fall apart uh, or the kid ends up being that favorite blanket they drag around or they're a chewer. So we don't want anything you make to turn around and come apart. So, and what you do is you zigzag. You don't straight sew on this one. This one usually is always a zigzag. If you look at the uh, blankets from the store uh, for babies and everything, it's always zigzagged. Okay, because that makes it tougher and stronger. Okay, you want to hold this one, put it right here. Okay, because we have to talk about the next thing, okay? Now, Kara really helped me an awful lot. Okay, so here we have this one and stuff. And then we made with that soft military material, but this is a little hard material to work with because it overstretches sometimes on going this way, but not this way and stuff. But it's got that fuzzy receiving blanket feel to it. And if you notice a lot that's in the store and everything, they're 26 by 29. And I always feel that it's not big Mimi, enough. Whoa. So I made mine, yeah. So I made mine 32 by 36. So there's a little bit of extra on both, both ways. Okay, so she will have two of them. 
uh, because I still have one more left to sew, but I need to buy some more. You know, and this is already folded right in half for you. So you just put it on the, the material right there, and then you just sew. Okay. Hey, I want to see. So we've done that. I want to see, yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, then I the next thing we've done you. was some bibs. Now, Kara really helped me out on this uh, because she uh, tangled them all up for me. <laughs> the strings and everything. Uh, she took them off the cardboard and tangled them up. So she helped me. So, with the race car, because that's what Mom wanted. So, there we go. We made green ones and stuff. And then we have material left. Uh, you know, because this is how you start out. Uh, to make some uh, with the black string. So you'll have the green and you'll have the red and you'll have the black. So you'll have a little of all of them. Now just make sure that when you do put, because they're two-sided, they'll be like this. Okay, she messed that up too. Uh, but make sure that before you cut for the neckline that your cars are facing the right way. Okay, as best as you can, you know, because some of them kind of sideways and everything. But make sure that they're facing that way and everything, because that works a lot better. Oh, she. Yeah. Okay. So what I've done to do this, there's some pieces I still have left, because i got to have, I'll have enough for two more and stuff, is I use my cereal bowl. <coughs> Just went around like this, as you can see. Traced around it on the back side. Then I cut it out. And then I took one of my sandwich plates and stuff. And this is about, yep, six inches. So I kind of marked them. You just go about well, like this once you get the circle. Let me show you, it'll be easier on this one. Once you have them both on the right side, just go like this, mark it what you think is about the neckline, and then mark it again, wait a minute here, on the wrong side here, because you don't want nothing showing on the good side, and you just trace it, right there. And this is from here to here about five and a half inches. Okay, depending on, you know, if you do it straight. Whoa, don't let it get away from me. I need that. Okay, so we can make some more. Got to make some more. Okay, so we'll have three more. So that'll give her seven bibs when we're all done. Okay, one, two, three. Yep, and we already have four. So she'll have seven bibs when we're done with that. And then, you know, every kid needs their first pillow. So, because mom loves all the race cars, and if you watch some of my pictures on Facebook, Kara helped me last night to stuff it, right? So Mimi sewed it, and Kara and Mimi stuffed it just for the great grandchild. All right, so these are all the extras that we've done so far, and uh, I hope she has a nice baby shower and everything, and that she likes what she receives. Okay, so say bye-bye. Bye-bye, Mama. <laughs>
I'm taking it. You always got to shop around. And for babies, you always want softness. So what I did was I doubled it, and then I pinned it. That way when I put my uh, ribbon around it, it'll stay put. And I ironed my ribbon in half. Remember how I told you, always iron, and you'll have a better looking job. So I ironed it right in half. That way when I sew it, I'll be perfect on both sides. Everything will be all right. So this takes care of blankets. And that's pretty easy to make, and the babies always need a lot of them because, you know, they're spitting out, making messes all the time. Okay. So here we got our cats, and we got our frogs, and we have burp cloths, burping cloths. And those are pretty easy. Now, this here I found in square pieces. Okay, and for 50 cents, can't go wrong there, 50 cents a burp cloth. You know how expensive that is. Now it's got a little bit of ruggedness to it so that it can clean up, but yet soft. Gotta have soft. Nothing but softness for babies because their skin is very delicate. Okay? Then we have our bibs. Again, I bought these pieces. These are the same pieces just like it. 50 cents and you can get two for each 50 cents. So I cut two of them out, and what I did was, no patterns needed, I used my cereal bowl. Just cut the circle right there, and then what I did was, you always had your tea cup and a saucer. So I marked my saucer for about a third. That makes for the neckline, and I cut that right out. Okay? little cheating ways, you know, you don't have to buy patents for everything. And that's one thing you're going to learn a lot with me is I find other ways of doing things so you don't have to buy patents because that's, you know, it, it's an expense. A lot of people can't afford that. So, then I bought a fleece trim, okay, only because the fleece is really, really soft, makes it easier for tying, also makes it really a lot easier for sewing. Because uh, you can just bend that, you know, and it forms whichever way. So it's really good when you're going around a curve. And what you need to do is to overlap like that when you first put your first piece on. Okay? You just measure it like that and then overlap. And the reason for overlapping is because when you're done overlapping, you're going to want to take your scissors and cut it like the circle is still going around. And it's important that you do that. You can't just say, okay, that's what I need, and cut it square. You can't do that. It has to go around because you want it to continue going around. Okay? And then when you get over here, only because bibs get washed an awful lot, you don't want none of your work to ever come apart, you back stitch, and then you stitch, continue stitching. Okay? And what you need to do is count how many inches you need to go around here. And it's pretty much double for the time. Okay? So this took me 18 inches to go around. So I needed 18 for my tie. So you start with 9 inches sewing straight, you know, and then you put your bib right in there, and then you continue sewing, and when you come back around and come to the end, you're going to have another 9 inches. And that's what you need, okay? I've already measured it <laughs> to make sure it tied up right and everything for little ones. I mean, you know, this is my fifth granddaughter and I have two grandsons. Okay? And the reason we chose blue, even though it's a little girl and should be all little girl patterns and everything, is because that's her daddy's favorite color. So he's really going to love this. Haven't seen it yet. The baby shower is coming. Okay. So, one thing you always do with all your leftovers, because, you know, see here, my 50 cents, I made two of them. You know, double. You can wear them on both sides. Doesn't matter. Okay. What you do with your leftovers, and you know me, I've worked in schools and all the little leftovers of everything you save, 
because I do crafts, and I've done crafts in three different schools from grades K to 6, and you'll find some of them in my craft book. But this makes really good pattern for eggs, which Easter is coming up next. So you're going to want to stay tuned to some more of my videos, okay? Because I'll show you what to do with that. And because this is a baby, we'll use some of the Young Hunt. If you have, haven't checked out his YouTube, he's into woodworking and everything. So we'll use some of his skills along with the leftover pieces of the material you see here. And we'll make something really nice to hang on this baby's wall. Come Easter. So make sure you stay tuned. But always save your leftovers because there's always craft that can do. Even the ribbons, everything. You know, especially this because it's green for Christmas. But save all your little odds and ends because you never know what you're going to make next. Thank you very much. I'm Doris Bowyer. Be sure to check out my YouTube, sub me, check out my other videos, and stay tuned for some more sewing and some more handy money-saving tips. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Today we're going to show you a perfect little girl's valentine. Okay, we're going to show you how to do this lovely apron. Okay, first of all what we do is we use a cardboard and we make a half a heart. That way you're guaranteed when you open up your heart both sides will be equal. I've learned to compromise an awful lot by doing uh, costumes for school plays. So, I compromise a lot in a lot of my videos, but this is how we do it. And what you do after is put it right on the fold of your fabric. So we've done it right on the fold of our fabric. kind of looks like an ice cream cone. And then we open up our fabric, and then we want to do lace. Now, some of the lace you can buy is already gathered. I bought this one because it has roses. And then it has a layer of hearts that go right over it. And I kind of like this one. It was really pretty. It goes good with the pinks and the fabric. So I gathered my own lace. But you can buy lace already all gathered. You can choose any color fabric, any color lace, whatever you feel is pretty. I went with this one. It's kind of colorful. And then you just sew. Put your, the laciest part on the inside. Okay, and so five eighths of an inch in. Okay, and then with your, and you want to put it on the right side of the fabric. Okay, and then you take your second one that's also perfectly cut because you did it with your cardboard. You lay it on top and then you sew it. And if you, to make it easier for you, you can just turn this one over and see where you sewed your lace and just re-sew on that same exact line. That way you won't be overtaking on your lace. You know exactly where it was. Okay, and leave a little bit open on one of the tops of your heart because you're going to need to pull it out to turn it inside out because what you want is to be able to have your apron on this side or this side. Okay, if the mess gets too much, flip it over. Okay? So that's how you do This one's going to be the mommy one, and this one's the little girl. I like doing for mom and, girl, and little girls. Makes it more special because the little girls, of course, are learning from mom. Okay? So, and then this is our band. In order to measure, to begin with, to measure the size of your heart for mom and for your little girl, is you measure from the outside of each hip, then that will tell you how wide to make your heart. Divide it in half, of course, because you're going on the, the uh, fold of your fabric. Okay? So then you open it up, and then you'll know. Measure the width from hip to hip, and then measure from your waist down to your knees. And that gives you that one. Okay? And for little girls, what you do is you take an inch out all the way around. And then you'll have it for your little girl. Okay? To make your band, I use five inches. And the reason I use five inches is because I folded one fourth inch in 
and I ironed it. If you iron your stuff beforehand, before you sew it on, everything stays in place much easier for you, comes out perfect, a more perfect job, and it also won't lose shape in the wash, you know, depending on how you may have tugged. If you have it ironed, you're taking care of all that tug stuff that you would do. So after I folded it my half inch on both sides, I refolded it like this, and that's how I'm going to put my band across. But what I did here, because on the heart, if you were to put your apron just like this, then you'd have an open space here. So I folded that right down, okay, a little bit more than what that would be. And then I put my strap right on it. So that's how this came out like this. It's kind of cute. It's got its own design. You know, just cute. Okay, now we never get rid of any leftovers because what we have, uh, we cut out little strips. They're four inches long. They're about three-fourths of an inch wide. And what you do is you take a piece of wire, an old um, hanger, you know, one of the weak ones and stuff, shape it into a heart. You can make them big, you can make them small, whatever size you want. And then you tie them. All it is is one knot. Then you iron it straight flat down. And this is how you get this heart. Now, a really good thing to do with this, not only can they hang it in their room all over the place, but when your little girl bakes her cookies and gives them to Daddy and wins Daddy's heart, because, you know, the way to a man's heart is through his stomach, you can put that little picture right in here, and she gets to keep it forever. Okay? So this is really, really cute. And I made this with the fifth graders, uh, and they really enjoyed it, especially the girls, of course. The boys, well, they gave it to Mom for Valentine. But uh, the fifth graders done this, and on my craft book, this happens to be, uh, two of these happen to be the cover of my craft book. So you can find that. Directions, everything, you're all set. So if you're really adventurous, you can make little cats for your little girl, too. These are really, really cute. And uh, um, what you do to make your little cat is you measure, take your measuring tape, and you measure from the back of your head all the way to the front here. And whatever that is, add seven inches. Because what you need is your two inches for here in front, two inches on the back, and then you need your sewing and everything, too. So add seven inches after you measure that. That way it will also give you a little extra growing room, too. So you can make a little girl's cast. Now, one of the things that was really easy to find as a circle, because I compromised, like I told you before, is I used my Christmas tree stand. I have one of the big round ones. That was a perfect size for that. So that's how I made these. I circled it real close for the little girl and put my pencil out further back for mom. So we have mom hat, mom will have her apron, the little girl's hat, and the little girl's apron. Okay, so if you add with that a package quick easy bake cookies, okay, you add that to her little gift. And maybe a bouquet of red heart lollipops. Cute little bouquet. This will make for a beautiful Valentine gift for your very special little girls. Because little girls are so special. And they're only little girls for so long. I'm Doris Bollier, and I wish you a very happy Valentine.